It's wonderful when you get to have the privilege of experiencing art that is so unapologetically itself. And wonderful to watch the dawning of a new, powerful, wholly original voice in American filmmaking. And if you want to have that kind of experience today, you should go out and buy a ticket for Sorry to Bother You. There's a precarity inherent to filmmaking, especially when we're talking about more experimental or unconventional filmmaking, where there are so many elements that have to align for a movie to be this good and work this well, while also retaining so much honesty and so much weirdness. A lot of films with this strong of an ideological push and with this sort of message try to coast on it and go for easy jokes or an easy stock narrative or refuse to indict anyone except for a central villain. This film does not take any of those well-worn paths. Like, don't read about this movie's plot. A black man goes to work for a telemarketing company. You were a telemarketer years ago. Oh yeah. What did you draw from that? I'd like to hear the pitch. Well, I sat in my cubicle and vowed revenge, and so this is part of it. <laughs> I like to tell stories about folks in jobs that we take for granted and about how those worlds have, have the same amount of drama and the same amount of adventure as other worlds that we glamorize in, in film. And feels pressure to affect a white voice in order to succeed there. There is no white voice. That all of this stuff that we're doing is a performance of some sort. And the mythical idea of the white voice is this one where there are no problems, where you've got your bills paid, you never get let, you never get fired, you just get laid off. And that's like the performance of, of whiteness for some folks is like, even though I'm making 22,000 a year, I'm middle class. <laughs> yeah. That sort of a thing that, that is almost the opposite of the racist black tropes, the racist tropes of black folks, right, right, right. which are that we're savage and um, all our problems, poverty, our poverty comes from bad choices that we make. So the opposite of that is this mythical white voice that right. we sometimes have to put on in order to survive. That's the basic premise. That's all you need to know. This movie is wild and my experience would have been diminished if I'd had more than the memory of seeing a trailer months back or the encouragement of a bunch of people I know who loved it in my head when I watched it. I don't wanna tell you too much about the film because a lot of it are things that will take people by surprise. I, I would rather them only knowing that and going in. Know that Sorry to Bother You does have the skeleton of the movie you might have in your head when I talk about telemarketing and code switching, but it's expressed in such a fun, creative, explosive way that also doesn't hold back at all politically or in how dark the film's sense of humor gets or how strange the plot gets. I don't know when the last time I left a theater this energized and high on the experience was. I felt a lot with Hereditary, but that was a downer. And while it was perfectly made, it didn't have the wild experiments with film form this movie has, or the ingenuity or creativity. Sorry to Bother You is also fiercely, unapologetically leftist. How does Sorry to Bother You fit into that picture of organizing? I mean, it must be very interesting for you as a well-known anti-capitalist artist and organizer. To Communist. Now communist Marxist. I don't to... know, Marx, didn't he say something like, I myself am not a Marxist, <laughs> so. And so brutal and unusual in its satire, especially satire of racism and of class exploitation in a way that I don't know if I've ever seen in a film before. If you care about daring experiments in film form, if you care about art that examines racial oppression, if you care about capitalist exploitation, if you wanna laugh a whole lot, and if you wanna see a movie that somehow handles very current, very serious topics, yet doesn't go for cliches or for dour humorlessness and leaves room for surreal experimentation and brilliant slapstick, then you should go check this out. The background, the life that I've led uh, outside of art has not, really been uh, allowed to be a big influence on film in the last, you know, bunch of decades. And so I felt that telling a story that infused some of those ideas of struggle and movement building into uh, a film would be great. And I've got a strange sense of humor and I like 
to force people to listen to me. And it's funny because movies don't usually deal with that, even though it's something that they don't usually deal with the struggle that's happening. Rebellion is edited out of the worlds that we create with our movies, unless it's like 300 years from now in some world we can't relate to. What's happening now is the product of us ignoring what's been going on for a long time. And that's us living in the system. It's, it comes from the economic system that we're under. And this, this uh, film does deal with race, but it deals with race as it intersects with, our, with the economic system we're in. Very, very slight spoilers here, but the key complaint I had with Sorry to Bother You was that the white voice ADR at times could have been done better. I know it's called attention to in the film, and obviously a lot of the film's humor is derived from the incongruity of the white voice and a character's actual normal speaking voice, but there were a couple of moments where the way the actor's head was positioned or their body language or whatever didn't match the ADR well to the extent that it was kind of distracting. And I know it's not supposed to match 100%, and I'm sure they were fighting a bunch of technical limitations. And again, I know a character says another sounds overdubbed as a meta joke, but with so much attention to detail and so much work put into this film, I wish there had been a little more time spent on this specifically. That's a small technical complaint though, in the face of a film that's fun and biting and daring, and with a first time feature director and on a budget of only about $3 million. I started out in film school before I did music and having so many strange ideas that I thought would be hard to get funded. I actually finished writing it in 2012. Then I did an album in between that, so I set it down. December 2014, I ran into Dave Eggers from McSweeney's, and uh, I let him read the script, and he published it as its own paperback book. So since then, I've been trying to get the movie made. It's really incredible what writer-director Boots Riley accomplished here. I'm ambitious in the sense that I want to make great films, so I have some fear that it's just a film. Had I known how much work this movie would have been, I would have written a movie about two people sitting on a couch and breaking up, you know? <laughs> I was cackling at a lot of the jokes and references, and I felt so invigorated by the ingenuity on display. Without any details, there's a scene where a character moves from one living situation to another. And the way that the move is communicated kind of stunned me in its creativity, not to mention a ton of other small moments told in fun and creative ways. It's such a unique aesthetic experience. It's a challenging and engaging experience formally and intellectually. And it's weird and gross and brutal and funny. What do you think people are gonna walk away from this movie with? They're gonna walk away with about 18 less dollars. I was just thinking that. <laughs> but you will have thoroughly enjoyed yourself. And perhaps if you're the thinking type, you may reflect, but it's not required. I mean, I think there's an optimism yeah. that comes through this movie, that even though the world is messed up, yeah. that there is a way to change it, that there's, a, we, there's an analysis that shows that the, the people can do things like withhold their labor and, and, uh, and you know, uh, take hold of things, and there's an optimism that comes from that. If you in any way tend to enjoy the works that I tend to enjoy, or if you just generally want something new and something different and something leftist, definitely go check it out. Thank you for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon or Ko-fi so I can keep making videos like this one. Thanks!